Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the time. Uh, I just want to show some of the things that we have been doing, just in case uh, we can learn comments from the, learn things from the comments, and you can learn also some things that we have experienced and challenges because uh, yeah, this is the objective of our research to translate what we know into something useful. So artificial intelligence is we define it as like we want the computer to do our work. <laughs> You want it to work like that. And the AOP, Online Information System, as our uh, mom has said, we designed it when I was still a student uh, when, in 1998. Long story. Anyway, it's still running now. I'm the one maintaining. And across the, I think, 18 years, we have uh, observed many uh, things. First of all is the student evaluation. That was the main goal, is to automate the evaluation of the students, which was uh, quite laborious to the department chairs. But the first one, we experienced some things. I typed everything, all the curriculum, the checklist, everything. And uh, it was quite slow because our server was underpowered. And I was the programmer of this module. It checked so many errors. Uh, I mean, I was so paranoid in my programming. I had to check all the parameters of every function, if they are null, if they are space, if there's. So I was so. Uh, it took because I was doing too much input uh, parameter sanitization. And what uh, we made a text hierarchical database, and I uh, used Postgres to evaluate the logic of the prerequisites. Because you can have a PE2 requirement, you can have uh, PE1 like this, or PE2 one like this, or PE. For example, you want to enroll in software engineering, you have to, in you have, to have passed any programming subjects, this one, this one, this one, or, 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 and a database subject. So you could, you, you could have express different kinds of logical expressions with the prerequisites and uh, I just used the database to evaluate the prerequisites so uh, and that didn't work because it worked technically but it didn't work in the implementation because uh, no this is the version 2 I tried to make of course 40 seconds per student for 5,000 students you cannot enroll in three years, uh, in three years, in three, three days. So uh, the problem, we computerized to lessen the lines. So this won't work. So what I did, I reduced the input sanitization. I just removed all the error checking, and it became about three seconds each student on a Pentium 3 uh, server computer. It was usable, but it was not uh, feasible to be uh, implemented because of the difficulty in maintenance. In those years, we were still using text terminals and the teachers had a problem learning the user interface, remembering how to use it, and our, the changes in the curriculum, curricula, were faster than how the department chairs were able to update the computer. That's why uh, we just disabled it ultimately. But the version three, which we use now, we use a web user interface, there's more hope than an 80 character by 25 character text screen. We could do drag and drop for transfer, for transfer of credits, for uh, substitution of credits, and it's easier to learn and remember. And the AI here is that it remembers the decisions the department chair does. For example, I want to credit life and teaching of Jesus to the Gospels because we changed the name. The, and yeah, the system will ask, do you want to do this with everybody in your checklist or just this student, special case? If you click yes, then you will not have to do it again. So it remembers the more you use it, the more it learns, and it makes your life easier the, the, for the department chair. So I used some JavaScript, user-friendly, uh, yeah. So uh, the, t the real test is really if the people will use it, right? So I was, uh, we are still using it. Actually, it's a high-demand application especially for the departments which have hundreds of students. That's the only way. If you remove it, they, will, they might cry. Anyway, next is the, so we started to first serve the med tech, biggest department, dentistry and accounting, because this had, they had the highest motivation to uh, make their work easier and uh, evaluation promotion. And it was adapted voluntarily. We don't have to force. Because if it's actually beneficial, you don't have to force people to use the system. So, uh, yeah, so we are just still adding things on that one. And another thing that we have seen is that in the register office, 
the applications were big and duplicated because people come from elementary, they apply to college, or high school, and then they made a new uh, account. So what we, what we did here is to hide the ad. If you have an ad, a database application, add, edit, delete, right? But I hide the ad button. I hide, I hide it somewhere so that they cannot click ad without doing a search. So they have to first find the search. They have to search the applicant's name. If it's not there, then they can see the ad button. So it reduced the, in my observation, I, there's no real numbers, but just my <laughs> observation. It reduced the duplicate entries by about 80% in my estimation. That's why there's a, yeah. Next one is the total assessment. This one was not made by me, made by Benjan Francisco, the one who created the computer for the total assessment, I mean, the, the API for computing the complicated total assessment. In those of you who are in accounting, this, in summary for the students, it gives you a total assessment. For the departments, it distributes the income of all the swimming pool, the the audiovisual, the subject, the laboratory, it distributes everything to the departments in just one transaction. So in accounting terms, it's a balanced, totally balanced transaction with a breakdown and with the income distributed to all the departments. So at any point of time in the environment, you know how much money your department has. So, it, uh, so every transaction you know, in SQL begin and commit, it will have about 30 to 60 individual items inside. And it's really complicated. Every semester we have to do this. It's about 12 pages of business logic every sem, which I have to update because they change the fees. The finance changes the fees every time. This is the one guy who wrote the program. It's still working now. He actually made his own language just to be able to do this. And uh, very genius guy. Uh, he's, they are, I'm just the one who is maintaining. They have all gone to... US and Canada. So he made his own language and his interpreter just for this one. And also we also have a, a it used to be in manual accounting with the paper and the spreadsheet uh, paper. They have to celebrate when they have a trial balance. But with this computerized system, every day it's, it's always balance. It becomes like 50 minute uh, something uh, work with, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this problems with accounting, but we have to learn it as software engineers. One thing more is the class editor. We tried, it was a laborious process for the whole academic uh, team because the department submits to the dean, the dean checks, submits the VPA and counter checks, and then it is published in the paper, and then they type it all in the computer. So we did that computerized, and it uh, solved uh, plenty of uh, human errors. We had to do so, so much human work and we reduced the human errors also. And the benefit of this is that if there's no more room, you know, in this campus you have many classrooms, but we still lack rooms. It will help you find a vacant room for this schedule. It will also help, of course, this normal for scheduling, checks the conflicts for teachers. It's just a, actually a just set minus set, right? Those of you who, are, who have studied sets, it's just set minus set and you will see the remaining, and those are the vacant rooms, the vacant time, etc. And uh, one more thing is the prerequisites. We, I, we transfer this into the class instead of the course, because in, for accounting, the prerequisites for major accountants are different from the non-majors. So it's better to put the prerequisites in the uh, class section instead of the course. So that's one of the things that uh, we found out here. And then next one is, uh, it's very hard to understand the prerequisites logic because not so many people uh, study and uh, have logic subjects. So we had some kind of validator if their logic is correct. They tend to put English descriptions of the prerequisite logic which will not work. So we had to make this one. And then the transcript of records also, uh, this is a problem, it's slow to encode, to type from the computer, even if they're just copying and pasting, they have to uh, format it. But I thought that formatting was the problem, this is a problem. The format was challenging because it was not really a, like a table, it was designed by artists. <laughs> so it's very hard to put the, to make the, the data fit into the form. 
because uh, the form is already printed and you, you, don't, you never know when the printout will come. So, but on, based on observation, it is not actually the formatting that consumes most of the time of the registrar office. It is actually the editing. For example, it says there, fill constitution. But they don't want to put that in the, in the, in the transcript. They want to put Philippine constitution. So they edit again and again for everybody who took that same subject. They edit again and again. So what I tried to do, I said, let me just ask for the correct name. They edit it while they're doing it. And then next time they see it, the computer shows the edited version instead. So with this, another AI thing, that the system learns their edits and they never have to do the same edit again, therefore reducing the editing time. So this is one thing that uh, I really like about the machine that can learn what we are doing, spelling, corrections, acronyms. That's why they expand. And uh, this one, <laughs> if you are familiar with uh, Facebook, they give you an anniversary video, right? And I'm wondering how do they edit millions and millions of videos for millions of people? And they give everybody a nice video with nice music with uh, jumping faces around and uh, all those things. So for some time, I have been trying to try create this in my class. And we found out that you can actually script it in Blender. My students know Blender. And we can render it from the back end and just replace the pictures with some other pictures. And I had a collection of pictures because from the database. So I, I, we have the, this, thing, this thing called IOLIS personnel where students can log in, see their grades, their accounts, other schedules. And I put there some feature friends. And then I put their friend video. So it will just query the database of all the top classmates you have, the people whom you're in the class the most in your college life. And it will put all the pictures and uh, run the blender behind the scenes. And it will give you how many percent uh, rendering. And then it will show you a video. But uh, I started to hide this feature because of privacy concerns. I did not have <laughs> permission to display their picture in another person's friend video. Anyway, maybe we can work that permissions out later. But it was a fun thing to do, to make an automated video editing that was dynamic, that the contents were dynamic. We just use MLT and uh, uh, Blender. And uh, of course, Linux at the back. Yeah, <laughs> I hid it for privacy uh, because we have a law now about uh, privacy. So uh, the people have been asking, what happens if you go away or you're not there anymore? I said, AUP has existed from 1917 to year 2000 without IOLIS. So you can still exist without all of these computer things. But they say, we don't want to go back to the stone age. We want to use the easy things. So uh, actually, AI is quite addicting. In a computer science, the definition of AI is like something that has not yet been done. If it's been done, like the automated projector, the washing machine, it doesn't look like AI anymore. It has to have a wow effect, right? So actually, the definition of AI is like moving. If it's very common, we don't think it's AI, even if actually it automates a lot of our work. So, uh, so that's our, what we have seen. And uh, there are still many things that we can do. Many requests. Prioritize them by how much it, uh, the impact of uh, what we can do. So uh, it's plenty of opportunity for us in the IT, in the computer science uh, field to automate lots of work so that we have more time to do evangelism. Amen? Yeah. We are not here to just use computers. Okay, so that's all. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, yeah, that's really the great uh, question, sir. System analysis and design will not, the, of course, the, all the total things, the final things will not work without correct understanding of the data, the process the school uses. And it the data changes continually, 
the processes changes continually. The question is really not the, not the how do we make it, but how do we keep up with the changes? Because in our school, system analysis, software development, it's not just how to make it, it's finished. There is maintenance. But if the change is like too fast and too much, too many, too many departments changing, like 2018, everybody changes their curriculum, right? So now the whole system, which we, if we hard coded everything, then we are dead. If we have to make something that they have to be able to maintain it themselves, so it's just uh, there is no one like one way of looking at it or a static way of looking at it. You really have to pray a lot. I say, <laughs> yeah, you have to pray a lot. Yeah, you have to pray because. God gives you wisdom and understanding even if you don't understand the requirements that have not yet been expressed they don't know what they're going to need but the Lord helps you to uh, this is integration of faith and coding <laughs> yes sir uh, the objective of course the objective developing the system is the uh, reason we represented it as a research is to, to share the knowledge to our, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. But because of the interest of time, I cannot. Uh, I have my computer, but I don't know how long will the time will be because, yeah. But it's very interesting to, to show. Yeah, yeah. Maybe in the other presentation, in the longer format, because uh, we have uh, time. Any other? Oh yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we we have the traditional SQL database. Before that came, we had the file databases, which we also know. You old, those people who are old coders <laughs> put everything in files, right? So we don't. I didn't want to hit the database all the time. So I cached everything, especially those things that don't need get updated too much. I put them in files. The putting them in files, in my idea, uh, enabled us to scale because you could distribute the servers, etc. But we also have, sir, uh, regarding no SQL, I use in other parts of the system memcache D, because some queries take long, long time, and they don't get updated anyway so fast. So I use memcache D. I don't hit the database too much, like how Facebook and those big guys do in the in the web. Uh, memcache D is quite standard. It's a key value uh, pair or something database. Yeah, that one I have to learn. Yeah, I have to learn. Another thing that we are trying to do is lessen the server side load and do more uh, processing in the client side. Yeah. So I, in these days, I have more JavaScript than PHP. Okay, I'm sorry to inform you that um, we are very run out of this time. So maybe you can chat with certainly years. So before uh, he sits down, I would like to hand in this certificate of appreciation to 
Mr. Benio Perdi Pasamba for the information he shared. Okay, our next presenter is from... Uh, 